Hello, this is David Mandel, and I'm here today to talk about um, the open source community in Oregon. And um, so this video is uh, Oregon, the open source state. Um, and um, we'll start out here by saying that, um, you know, in Washington, um, well, Microsoft owns Seattle. They're uh, based in Redmond and they have a lot of influence in the Seattle area and in Washington in general. Oregon has gone a different route. We actually do do quite a bit of software too. Uh, we used to be based on, on um, uh, Tektronix way back in the 1950s and, and 60s. And then later we went to um, and Intel has moved in. HP was once very large here. Um, so we've had our hardware manufacturers. We've also had a lot of small uh, software development companies, uh, both in the proprietary world and in the open source world. In fact, we moved into the open source world quite early and are very prominent for a state the size that Oregon is. We're not the Silicon Valley. We're not the um, um, MIT area. But um, for a state our size, uh, we're, we're pretty prominent in the open source community. I'd say we were and Austin, Texas is. Um, we have a lot of open source developers here, a lot of well-known ones. Most of them are sort of freelance. They make money by working for various people. Uh, Linus Torvalds, the um, um, inventor of Linux, I guess you'd say, lives in Lake Oswego. Um, Ward Cunningham, who um, developed the wiki idea, which has blossomed into things like Wikipedia and wiki this and wiki that was is an Oregonian has been for decades and decades and decades uh, he's an old tectronics person um, and um, well he's not that old he's about my age um, and um, so let's get started here with what is in Oregon and um, just a little peek at, and the, you know, these are open for everybody to participate in. So I want you to know what is here. We're very uh, fortunate to have um, so much here in Oregon. Other states do not. The first thing is there is so much in Oregon that we do need a calendar of events. And the calendar of events was built by the open source community. It is open source. You can use it any you know, there's other communities use it. Corvallis has or had a corvalligator.org. A lot of other places have some variant of, um, they, they use the software that runs Caligator. But Caligator was developed in a Portland area for Portland events. Many, many, and since it was done by open source people, the whole calendar has an open source feel to it. I won't say every event on it is open source, but seems like the majority are. Anyway, um, the name of it is Caligator.org, and it just sound it out and you can spell it from that. And it's an e events calendar. At the time I made this, the events on the calendar are... I don't know what Lean Coffee Beaverton is. My coffee looks pretty lean to me, but um, I thought all coffee was. Um, anyway, um, work from, meet up, uh, Rails uh, Bridge. I assume that's probably a Ruby on Rails type thing. I don't know. Install Fest. Uh, so learn to install Ruby on Rails. I think. Click on the link and find out what it is. Um, Portland Pie Party, that's today. Um, for those of us who dearly love pie, which is what? It, it's some number, an irrational number. That is the ratio of the uh, circumference of a circle to the diameter. 
um, and um, the um, uh, here's an art and science volunteer program. Here's a, a pl plug clinic that's the Portland Linux Unix group held at Free Geek. Here's so on so, and, and and there's hundreds of these. You could not. There's many of them every night of the week. You choose your you know if you're coming to Portland, choose the event off Caligator and go to it. Um, Oh, here's one that um, somebody brought up in our class, the um, open source geography, which is dear to my own heart, although I haven't done any open, any geography in a long time. GIS, Geographic Information Systems. Okay, uh, let's, one of these groups is the Portland Linux Unix group. I'm fond of this group. This is an old group. It was really probably the first open source group in Portland. Um, I was one of the founders of the group and ran it for many, many years. I'm sort of retired now. Michael Dexter currently runs it. If you, anyone has any questions about it, feel free to contact me because I sort of know what's going on there. Uh, and it's been around for years and years and years. It's no longer a huge group. It's, um, but many, many groups have spun off of the Portland Linux Unix group. So I think it's still an important group. And we've got some um, uh, well-known members. Of course, our membership is, if you say you're a member, you are a member. So it, it's not hard to obtain membership in the group. Um, it's free of charge. And after the general meetings on the first at 7 p.m. on the first Thursday of the month at Portland State University, a lot of us go out for beer at the, um, well, for the last few years, we've been using the Lucky Labrador Northwest. Um, OK, another actually a place where the Portland Linux Unix group often meets, other than the general meetings that are at Portland State University, is some of our things like advanced topics and our clinics are held at Free Geek. Free Geek, everyone should know about. Free Geek is a recycling and education um, organization, a nonprofit, 501c3, in Portland. Well, they, they have associate members elsewhere. But it was founded in Portland, started in Portland. It's been in Portland for decades. I'd say, um, let's see, I'm trying to think. They started when I was working with Avalon Technology. So that was probably about 2000. Um, anyway, they're a good organization. They're also a good organization to take any electronic goods that you need to recycle. Um, they will put them to a good use and give them, if they can't be put to a good use, give them a respectable death. Um, another group in the Portland area is Dorkbot. Dork, Dork uh, I've never really been to one of their meetings. It's a group that meets every so often or meets, well, you can see the meeting list down here. They meet very often. And um, they're devoted to uh, robotic type stuff. Um, and um, apparently, they're meeting at Bunk Bar right now, or uh, at, at the present time, which is on Southeast Water Avenue. I thought they were meeting at um, Brain Silo, but. Uh, but unfortunately, what uh, Brain Silo has been a, uh, once again, one of these organizations that has a hacker space. So it's, they actually have their own space. And um, it's been around for quite a few years. Uh, unfortunately, it seems their webpage says uh, uh, Brain Silo is closing. Uh, that, that's really sad. And, uh, um, too bad. Maybe somebody can revive it or something because it, it's really good. Um, anyway, check into it because this 
Maybe I'm misreading this too. <laughs> Who knows? Another group in the Portland area that meets every so often is one called Personal Telco. Personal Telco was founded um, at beer one night at a plug meeting. And, uh, but it's its own organization. I believe they are, uh, yes, they are a 501c3 in their own right. Um, for the record, um, Portland Linux Unix group doesn't really exist. We're just a group of 700 people or something that uh, have a mailing list and maybe 50 or 100 of us get together every month, but we don't really exist. As again, once again, if you say you're a member, you're a member. You've paid, your dues are paid in full. Um, Personal Telco is actually a group, and um, but it's a lot like Plug, actually. They're known for promoting free and open wireless around Portland and uh, and do it on a voluntary basis. A lot of coffee shops and other and even homes that offer free wireless to their local community within a hundred or so feet um, are either wireless hotspots for associated with personal telco or they got their software and some help from personal telco in setting up. Um, maybe there's a node map here. Well this gives you an idea, just a brief idea of what there is around the Portland area of um, uh, personal telco hotspots. Pretty cool. It's a cool organization. Dearly love them. Okay, another thing that goes on in the world but you know has kind of come out of Portland to some extent and elsewhere is there's various uh, what's called unconferences um, bar camps is uh, bar camp is one of them bar camps are held all over the world every so often they're held in Portland now and then um, well here in Asia, they're held in, you know, <laughs> they've had them in, uh, well, Ghana, that's more like Africa, but uh, uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, um, Hong Kong, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, where's Singapore? There's no Singapore. Uh, I know Singapore does open source software, but uh, okay. Um, Oregon, uh, uh, various states in the United States um, and I don't think th I, I know these are, that they're missing a list of them because um, um, we've had bar camps in Corvallis, bar camps in Portland, um, many more bar camps in Portland than this one listed here. I don't know maybe one a year I'm not sure. Well some years more than that uh, you know, and they, everyone I've been to are free. If they're not free, they're dirt cheap. Um, they're in what's called an unconference. I'll talk about that a little, a little bit in a minute. Uh, another unconference, this one kind of came out of the Portland area, is called Recent Changes Camp. Um, I can't, I'm not sure if they still exist. I have not been to a recent changes camp in a long, long time. They're very much like a bar camp. Bar camp people tell me, nah, they're really different than recent changes camp. Recent changes camp people tell me they're different than bar camps, but I've been to both. I can't see that much difference. Um, you know, one rings a gong, the other rings a bell. Looks like the same thing to me. Um, um, these are all part of what's called the open space movement and they're kind of the idea of doing a wiki um, conference where the conference just kind of makes up itself on the fly. Um, the wiki idea came from Ward Cunningham so a, a lot of the open space things like bar camp or recent changes camp kind of look on Ward as being their father. I think, uh, or at least they give him due respect. And 
the idea is these are not planned conferences as much as they are. Uh, so that's what keeps them cheap. They can be cheap because you go to the conference, you at the conference, and maybe you've got something prepared, maybe you don't, maybe you're going to be a speaker, maybe you aren't. Well, maybe you aren't, but you end up being a speaker. So, um, and what they do, well, I can't find it. They will put up a board, a bulletin board, with a um, list of meeting times and meeting locations and people, and they'll have little pink signs or yellow signs or something where you can basically just not write the name of what you want to talk about or you want to discuss, and then you write it in there and they schedule you into a time block or usually you do the scheduling. You look on the panel for empty spaces and try to look to see that there's not somebody given the same talk or or the same topic or a similar topic and certainly if they are not at the same time and and you just sort of juggle it around yourself and then you um and then people will gather around and most of the talks are not formal talks um there are more discussions and sometimes the guy that brings up the topic sort of leads the discussion other times there's so many knowledgeable people on that topic or or people with questions that the talk just kind of leads itself. They're very informal. Um, these type of conferences have some advantages over traditional conferences and some disadvantages. They are much cheaper and easier to put together so they are cheap or free to attend. They are, everything's very spontaneous and you get topics discussed that just wouldn't get covered at a normal conference. Also the total theme is usually a little bit vague so you get people coming who maybe are politicians and people coming who are, um, uh, well Ward goes to a lot of these, who are uh, uh, Oh, technical geeks, uh, programmers will come, um, religious people will come, um, I, I mean uh, uh, clergy, um, just a lot of different people come. So often you'll get discussions that go across disciplines where you get to see th the same thing from different people's point of view. And, the, and you get to make contacts with people that you just normally wouldn't make. They're really great for that. The downside of them is since they are not prepared talks or prepared things, it's hard to cover topics that have a lot of depth to them. Um, you know, you wouldn't get, it would be very hard, you know, for somebody to talk about, um, the inner workings of the Fourier, uh, uh, fast Fourier transform or something. That, that you know, even if you really know what you're doing, that takes preparation and that's more the territory of a formal conference as opposed to these unconferences. So what do we have for formal conferences in the Portland area? Well, the biggie, the big formal conference is O'Reilly's Open Source Convention, which draws in a lot of key open source developers every year. It's probably about two or three thousand people a year. It's put on by O'Reilly and Associates. There's no real tie to Portland. They had it someplace and then they brought it to Portland. It worked in Portland. They ended up staying in Portland a long time. The Portland open source community really, really supported them, maybe twisted their arms a little bit, gave them volunteers, all sorts of things. Um, and they've been in Portland for a long time. A few years ago, they decided, nah, they'd had it with Portland. They didn't, you know, like the Oregon Convention Center. And it was too far for Tim O'Reilly to come uh, or something. I don't know. Anyway, they decided to move it to San Jose. They held it in San Jose one year. 
There was massive lobbying from the Portland people. Mayor Sam Adams sent a delegation from Portland to San Jose um, and um, um, uh, who lobbied um, O'Reilly to bring it back. The Portland Linux or Portland Linux Unix group, of course, did too. Um, and um, guess what? They've been back to Portland ever since. We need to treat them well because this is a nice conference to have in Portland. That Os the OSCON, I believe, has two conferences a year, one in Portland and one in Europe. Well, one in North America and one in Europe. The one in Portland, or the one in North America, we'd like to keep in Portland. Um, now, to attend OSCON, it looks like it's very expensive. If you can go to OSCON and get like your employer to pay, do pay. It's not that dreadfully expensive as conferences go. But as you see here, the standard price for it, it's a sort of a one week conference. Maybe it's four days or three days. Well, the three main days. But it's sort of a week conference. The standard fee is $1,400. That's a little less, I think, than it had been. But it's still, that's a lot of money. Um, I don't know if there's student breaks and unemployed breaks, and I, I'm not sure. Um, it, it's an expensive conference. The sessions are really good. Every session I have had the privilege of going to has really been has been quite good. Of course, I, there's a big selection of sessions. You only pick the ones that you think are going to be really good. Um, and I think it is worth the fee, but it's um, beyond my budget and probably beyond most people's personal budgets. Um, and um, But if you can get an employer to pay for you, twist their arms, get them to pay for them, because we need O'Reilly to make money on this thing. Now, surrounding OSCON, though, there is a lot of satellite events. One, and O'Reilly tries to make it so most everybody can go to part of the conference. One of the things they do is they have an expo hall that is really cool. It's not huge, but it's still very cool. It's got a lot of open source projects that they allow, they uh, let have booths uh, free of charge, I might add. And then it's got a lot of commercial vendors. HP is usually there, IBM, Intel, uh, um, Google, uh, you know, Bluehost, uh, Rackspace, um, whoever. Microsoft, yes, Microsoft's usually there too. In fact, Microsoft bought me a dinner one year. Um, and we had a good time. Um, and Microsoft's doing more and more open source too. Um, however, the um, um, Expo Hall Pass is $25 and uh, for uh, the three-day Expo Pass. It's that's a great bargain. That's well worth the price. Sometimes you can even get in for free with um, there's some people are given uh, conference passes and or, or free passes and some groups are sometimes given free passes. But you know, actually $25 is a good fee, is a good price. I've paid that. It, I paid that just to support the conference, even when I've had a free pass. It's it's a great thing, and it's within a student budget. You'll get twenty five dollars worth of education out of it. OSCON also has birds of the feather sessions at night, which are less formal sessions, a little more like an unconference, but usually more formal than unconference sessions, and um, sometimes given by experts. And um, those are general. Uh, those have always been open, free of charge to, or free at least to anyone that has an Expo Pass. You don't need a full pa conference pass to that. Uh, there's also usually a couple big parties that people going to the Expo Hall usually get invitations to. Um, my organization, the Portland, or I'm sorry. Um, 
when I was executive director of LinuxFund.org, we gave a party once, and you know we had eight, nine hundred people at the party. So, um, um, well, actually, we gave several parties, but but the one in San Jose I remember uh, very distinctly. It was a good party, um, and. Um, so anyway, I really, really recommend OSCON. Uh, go into the, you know, if you can't afford the full ticket, go to the expo thing and go to some of the auxiliary events, the Birds of the Feather session. There's also just people sitting around in a hall. There's always tables around in a hall, and you can sometimes sit down at one of those tables and have a great conversation with various developers and stuff. <coughs> um, that That's good, too. Um, and there's events surrounding OSCON because all these developers are coming to Portland. A lot of projects figure, well, you know, all these airfares are, everybody's coming to Portland. We'll have our project meeting at, while we're in Portland. So you may find that there are groups like the, um, um, oh, a Pearl, the Pearl people may have their Pearl meeting during OSCON, the, or maybe the weekend before or weekend after. The the uh, Joomla people, the um, uh, you know, I don't know, various groups. That's common. One of the things that does happen is there's John O'Bacon, which I went to the wrong page here. John O'Bacon. Puts on has been putting on a conf a mini conference, an open conference, the weekend before OSCON at the Portland Portland Convention Center. OSCON or O'Reilly has been donating space for it, and um, and he's been doing this for a number of years. It's called the Community Leadership Summit. Community Leadership Summit dot com. Um, you really should register for it, but it's free of charge, or ha always has been. Yes, register for the Community Leadership Summit, uh, a free event. And, um, um, and it's really a cool event, and you know, there's a lot of cool people go to it, and a lot of good things happen. I often go to that, or I'll go to one day of it. Um, sometimes I won't go to Sunday, but but I'll go Saturday. Uh, it's a really good event to go to. Everybody's welcome. They say it's community leadership, but um, it's like plug. If you think you're a leader, you're a leader. Um, you know, don't don't be intimidated by the title or anything. It's a cool event, and it's been getting bigger every year. Um, okay, we have other conferences in the Portland area. Uh, Open Source Bridge is a conference held in the Portland area. It's been held every year, uh, and it really is a Portland conference. It, it was originally, um, when O'Reilly left Portland and went to San Jose, Portland was feeling like we needed our own conference. So um, some people got together. Selena Deckerman and I forget who all, but but people got together and built a conference here in Portland, which is smaller, more local conference. Um, it's a little bit more. It's it's kind of a combination of real conference with papers and and everything. And uh, on the side they have a. Uh, an unconference because the people that put it together, the original people, Selena and Audrey and whoever, really are big on the unconference format. So it's got both formats. Um, it's it's a cool event. Um, it does cost a bit of money, but because of the way they put it on, using all local people and um, keeping everything cheap and using a lot of sponsorship. They're able to keep the prices down. It's still like, um, like about two hundred and forty dollars. It's held every. I should say it's held in June every year. Uh, OSCON is held in 
the end of July or beginning of August every year. Um, once again, Open Source Bridge is held <coughs> in June every year. And um, I've never actually attended. I have spoken at um, Open Source Bridge, but uh, um, but um, and I was had a minor minor involvement when they first put it together. But beyond that, I haven't had anything to do with it. Um, but it's a good conference, and it's quite popular. It's well attended. There's other conferences in the area. There are, actually, there's always other conferences in Portland too, open source conferences. But it's hard to say when some of them, they often come and go from the city, and I don't even know about them. Um, and I probably hear about as many as anyone. Um, well, no, there's people that follow this closer than I do. But um, but there's often like I remember going to the National Postgres Conference. Um, one year in Portland, a um, couple open source conferences in Portland that were, um, oh, I'm sorry, a couple open source GIS conferences in Portland. Um, there were just a couple, and I can't remember what they were, but they, they come and they go. And they're usually, you know, a couple hundred people. Often, very few Portlanders go to them. Um, um, it just depends on the conference. <clears throat> but there's some more general conferences around in the area. My favorite conference, I think, along these lines is one called Linux Fest Northwest, which is held every April, the end of April, in Bellingham, Washington. I really, I've been a promoter of this conference since it started 16 years ago or whenever. This was probably the first Linux Fest that there was. There's now quite a few across the country. But it's a cool one. Bellingham is almost all the way to uh, Vancouver, BC. Bellingham is very northern um, Washington. So it's quite a little drive. I go most every year. Every year I can. And uh, I promote it. I, I'm not going to talk at it this year. But I have, in, I have many years. Um, it's a low-key conference. It's put on at Bellingham Technical College, which is like Portland Community College. It's a two-year college in Washington. Uh, it's free of charge. It goes on on, um, I believe it's uh, Saturday and Sunday. And um, they have, um, they always have a salmon dinner, uh, a salmon lunch on um, well, sometimes two days, but certainly on Saturday. And it's not very expensive, and it's delicious. Um, that is put on by the college students in the um, cutlery arts program. It's um, And they have a lot of, as I say, it's kind of a low-key conference. They have a lot of good talks. They have maybe five tracks of talks. They have um, things for kids to do. Whoops, they changed their, um, they changed their um, format. I'm not used to this new format. Um, but here's things they cover. Getting started with Linux, um, building community, running user groups and stuff, legal issues with uh, open source, geek lifestyle, open source hardware, Postgres, wow, a whole track on Postgres. Um, <coughs> database and development, uh, security and privacy, open source web. And um, we'll go down into one of those. OK. And there's their talks there. They apparently don't have a schedule out yet. But um, but there's their talks. Um, and they like you to register. Registration is free. Um, but they do like you to register in advance so they know how many people to expect. Uh, you can register at the door. But if you're going to drive all the way to Bellingham, <coughs> <coughs> register in advance. 
You can also take a train to Bellingham. I'm told that works pretty well. And there's always carpools leaving through the Portland Linux Unix group. I often, uh, you know, uh, often I arrange it so I can go up with people. It usually involves, a, you know, you've got a spring for a couple days hotel bill. The hotels are inexpensive up there. <coughs> 60 or $70 a night um, for a decent hotel. There are other conferences across the country. Another one that I've only gone to once, but I've um, have friends that run it, so uh, or or founded it is Scale, which is the Southern California Linux Expo held in Los Angeles uh, in the Hilton Hotel right next to the airport. I think they probably charge fifty dollars or something to attend. I as I as I recall, it's not free, but it's 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 it's. Maybe it's fifty dollars a day. It's not too badly priced. Um, one of the ones that's been around for a long time is the Ohio Linux Fest. There's one in Texas. There's one or two in Florida. There's um, that that are held most every year. Oh, Kansas! Kansas has been held a few years now. Um, anyway. Um, So um, that's everything I had to say. Of course, the emphasis of this talk is that there are a lot uh, that there is a lot of open source done in Oregon and in Portland. There are a number of strictly open source companies here in Oregon, like uh, Wirex and Puppet Labs, and um, uh, well. I, I can't remember others. And there's an awful lot of open source de consultants in the area who are rather small and, um, but hey, make a good living and have done it for a long time. Uh, and other open source developers who may be sponsored by somebody like Linus is sponsored by the uh, Linux Foundation. Um, um, Oh, Lars Lohm has been uh, working. He works out of his home in Corvallis. He works for um, Mozilla.org, um, so on and so forth. So, you know, I encourage people to get to know the open source community and participate in the open source community. The community is also involved, has a lot of people both at the younger both younger people, but it actually has a lot of older people too. It's it's basically about all age groups. Um, it's not quite as diverse as one might like. It does tend to be white males, um, although there are more and more women in it um, in in the community, and um, I believe there's a group called Geek Chicks or something that's in the Portland area, um, but uh, there's a lot of women involved in the um, in some of the um, database groups and probably the web development groups too. And uh, we're certainly welcome to them and plug. And uh, most groups are. Um, but uh, you know, get involved. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun and it leads to good things. So that's everything I had to say. Bye bye.